Hello grade 11s and welcome back to another vector video with me Miss Martins. Remember if you want more vector videos on different subtopics click the playlist linked in the description box below but in today's video we're going to be doing head to tail diagrams. So this video is going to consist of three parts. I'm going to quickly do a brief explanation, just the stuff you need to know. Then we're going to practice. I'm going to give you some different scenarios. And then number three, teacher tips. You don't want to miss that. Let's jump right in. Why do we need to use a head to tail diagram? It's one method that we can use in order to determine the net vector. Now, why on earth is it called a head to tail diagram? When we draw a vector, so if I had to draw a vector for you, my vector would look like this. Okay, it doesn't matter what direction it's facing in at the moment and the magnitude or the size of the arrow doesn't matter. But what I want you to understand is that vectors have two parts when I draw them graphically. This over here is called the head. Okay, I'm using one arrow to label another arrow, but you get what I mean. This part over here is called the head. Okay, and then we've got this part over here, which is called the tail. So we've got head and we've got a tail. Now the head to tail diagram is called that way because it is, that's how we draw the diagram. So this is an example of a head to tail diagram. This diagram does not have the resultant force drawn on yet, but this could be a head to tail diagram to represent a situation such as two people pushing on the same box. So say person A pushes with 10 Newton and person B pushes with 20 Newton. Can you see that they're both pushing to the right? So A is pushing with 10 Newton to the right. B is pushing with 20 Newton to the right. So overall, what is the net force acting on the box? Well, 10 Newtons to the right plus 20 Newtons to the right. So 30 Newtons to the right. That would be the resultant or the net vector. But again, why is it called head to tail? Look at how the diagram is drawn. Let's look at this one. Okay, remember vector A was 10 Newton to the right. Vector B was 20 Newton to the right. These are force vectors. But remember, it could be any vectors. It could be acceleration. It could be velocity. It could be momentum. Any vector. But I like to use forces in my examples because they make the most sense practically to most people anyway. Why is it called head to tail? The first vector's head over here. The first vector's head is touching the next vector's tail. If I had three vectors in a row all going to the right, it would look like this. Vector A, then vector B, then vector C. You can see that this is a head to tail diagram because the head of the one vector is touching the tail of the next. The head of the one vector is touching the tail of the next. When it comes to drawing the resultant vector, it's slightly different. The resultant vector always starts from the tail of the first, okay? So the first vector was A. So it starts at the tail of the first and it points towards the head of the last. Okay, so keep that in mind. I do have steps coming up, but here's another example. So say for example, the gray ones are the vectors or the forces acting on the object and the red one is the resultant. So say, for example, this was someone walking, let's say, 10 meters north. Okay, we're going 10 meters north, and then we're going 6 meters south. What is the displacement? or What is the resultant vector? Now, I don't add 10 and 6, because if I were to add them, then this should be the diagram. 10 and 6. Then I would add them because they're both going in the same direction. That would be 16. But the one that I've given you on the screen with the gray arrows, we do not add them. We subtract them. We're going 10 meters this way and then 6 meters back this way. So 10 minus 6, what does that give you? That gives you 4 meters. And which way is the red arrow pointing? It's pointing north. And think about it. It should make sense. If you walk 10 meters in, that, in, in one direction, so you're going 10 meters north. And then you turn around and you do six meters backwards. Overall, how far did you go from your starting point, your start over here, to your end point? So I know you went there, 10 meters, and then you went back. This is where you started. This is where you ended. Remember, the red is basically called displacement. It's from where you start to you end. You went four meters. So why is this the head-to-tail diagram? How did I know to do it like this? Let's take a look again. 
So I draw my first vector, which is this one, the 10 meter. Then it's a head to tail, head to tail diagram. The head of the one vector is touching the tail of the next vector. And I know you might be thinking, but ma'am, those aren't touching. What? Those aren't touching. But it needs to make sense to you guys that it doesn't make sense to draw it like this. 10 meters and then the 6 meter one like this, going back. That's confusing. So we don't draw them overlapping, otherwise you can't see the, the different vectors. We draw them next to each other. But the principle is still the same. The head of the one vector is touching the tail of the next vector. Okay, and then how do you draw the resultant vector? I don't know if you can remember from what I said um, a few minutes ago. You start from the tail of the first and you point towards the head of the last. So you start drawing at the tail of the first. The first vector was this one over here, the 10 meter vector. So you start by its tail and you point towards the head of the last. Okay, so there are steps coming up, but let's show, I want to show one more example. Let's say I'm doing this example over here. Let's use meters again. Let's say I walk 15 meters to the left and let's say I walk 5 meters down. How do I draw in my resultant vector? First of all, did I draw my head to tail diagram correct? A lot of students do it like this. That's wrong. So I need you to pause the screen. If this needs to go in your book, this needs to go in your book now. What you see on the screen currently is wrong. Why is it wrong? Because I've got a tail touching a tail. No, it's called a head to tail diagram. So what you see on the screen is wrong. You need to move this vector so that it's head. Woo, I'm changing the size of my vector. So that it's head to tail. Okay. But how do I draw in the resultant? If I go 15 meters to the left and five meters down, overall, I'm going left and down. I'm going like this, right? How do you draw it? You draw it from the tail of the first, pointing towards the head of the last. That's your resultant vector, this one over here, this purple one. And if you get confused, because I know some of my students get confused, they're like, ma'am, I don't know if I must put the arrowhead over here, pointing that way, or does the arrowhead go pointing up like this? Think about it like this. We're going left with this vector. It's going to the left. This one's going to the left. And then it's going down. So this one must go down and to the left. If I had to put the arrowhead up here, that's pointing up to the right. So that's wrong. Another way to remember is just start at the tail of the first and end at the head of the last. Another question that I get with a, a two-dimension vector diagram like this one is, ma'am, what if I drew my down vector first? So they mean, what if we did that and then that? Is that still correct? I want you guys to think about that for a second. Is that still correct? Remember, what are we drawing? We're drawing a head to tail diagram. There's the head of the one. There's the tail of the next. Yes, it's still correct. But then how do I draw the resultant? It's the same thing. Starts from the tail of the first, pointing towards the head of the last. You will see that the direction of that arrow, so it's going like that, is exactly the same as that first diagram that I did. Remember, think of my nails as being the arrowhead. Do you see my purple vector? I hope you can see it. The arrowhead is down here. It's going down and to the left. See how it's pointing in the exact same direction. Okay, so whether I switch up these arrows, if I want to do that, it's the same thing. Okay, that and that, they're exactly the same. The resultant is pointing in the exact same direction. So here are my steps. So you draw each vector as an arrow with the length of the arrow representing the magnitude of the vector. So then we've got draw the first vector and label it vector A, vector 1, whatever. Join the next vector so that the tail of the next vector is touching the head of the first vector. So just like that one example, say we did this, so it's first vector, vector A. Then we draw the next vector so that the tail of the next vector is touching the head of the first vector. There we go. 
carry on adding all the vectors. So say we had a third vector like this. The tail of vector C is touching the head of vector B. And then to draw the resultant, we draw a vector starting from the tail of the first. So that's over here. Pointing towards the head of the last. That would be the resultant. Remember always to label your vectors. Hey? Very, very, very important. Let's do an example. Person A pushes a box with 10 newton to the right. Person B pushes the same box with 30 newton to the right. So they're helping you basically. And person C opposes them. Opposes means they do the opposite and pushes the same box with 15 newton to the left. Draw a head to tail diagram to determine the resultant or net vector. Okay, so we've got person A. Oh, I did that a bit too long. Person A is 10 newton to the right. You can call it vector A or you can label it with 10 newtons. Then person B, 30 newton also to the right. So our vector is also going to point to the right, but it must be 30 newton. So it must be more or less three times as big like that, more or less. That's vector B. So far, we've got 40 newton to the right. I hope you guys can see that. But person C is opposing us, which means they're pushing in the opposite direction with 15 newton left. So we go head to tail over there. So our next one, when I draw vector C, it has to be head to tail. Vector C is not going to point that way because they're not pushing to the right. It has to point that way. Okay. 15 newton, which is about half of the, uh, is half of vector B. So that's vector C, 15 newton. And this is still head to tail, head to tail. Now, how do I draw in the resultant? Let's change my color. Let's make it red. The resultant goes from the tail of the first, pointing towards the head of the last. So from the tail of the first, pointing towards the head of the last. Let's call this resultant. And what would the magnitude of that resultant be? A and B is 40 together. 10 plus 30 is 40. Then we minus the 15 because the 15 is going in the opposite direction. So the resultant would be 25 newtons to the right. And here is a example of how we would do it using a calculation. We say vector A plus vector B plus vector C. We start off with vector addition because remember a resultant vector is the vector sum. So we start off with a sum, 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 sum. 10 plus 30 minus 15. Why am I saying minus? Because in this example, I chose to the right as positive. So 10 is positive, 30 is positive. So 10 plus 30 is 40 minus 15 is 25 newtons to the right. Remember, if you were to do this using a calculation like this, you have to give the direction. You have to say right or east or whatever. If you don't, you won't get your marks. What about something like this? This looks insane. How do you draw the resultant vector over here? So in this example, I've got 10 newtons, 30 newtons. Then you're going down with 15 newtons. Then you're going to the right with five newtons. Then you're going down with 10 newtons. Technically, the resultant vector would be from the tail of the first, pointing towards the head of the last, like that. Okay, just like that, the resultant vector. When we calculate the resultant vector, it would be a little bit more complicated because we would take all the vectors going to the left and to the right, which would be all of these, and we would get an overall vector going left or right. And then we would take all the vectors going up or down, which would be these, and we would get an overall vector going up or down. And basically we would have something like that looks like this. It would be 10, plus 30, which is 40, plus 5, would be 45 going this way, and then 15 and 10, which would be 25 going this way, and our resultant would be like this. Same thing. Do you see that this arrow over here, let's use blue, this is the resultant arrow. It's pointing that way. It's exactly the same as this arrow over here, and I know you might be thinking, but ma'am, it's not the same size. I didn't draw this according to scale, but what I want you to focus on is the fact that the blue lines are pointing in the exact same direction. Okay, so if you're confused about how I got 45, how I got 25, how this works, I will be doing this in a later video, okay? So if it's not posted already, it will be posted in this playlist. Let's do one more example, and then we are done for this video. So the following forces act on a body, 5.3 newtons upwards, so let's draw F1, oops, F1 is 5.3 newtons upwards, pretend that's pointing up, 
and then F2 is 2.2 newtons upwards, and F3 is 10.7 newtons downwards. Okay, so 5.3 and 2.2, so that means that F3 is going to be longer than these. Okay, that's very, very ugly, and you're going to use it really when you do it, but this is 5.3, and this is 2.2, and this is F3, which is 10.7. So, head to tail, head to tail. How do we do the resultant? We start from the tail of the first and we point it towards the head of the last. So that is F res, F resultant or F net. And what is the magnitude of that? Well, I would take 10.7. You say 10.7, my calculator is not doing its thing. And you would minus 2.2 and minus 5.3. That is 3.2 newtons downwards. Remember, this side over here must equal this side over here. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Okay, so the point of this question is understanding that you draw it head to tail. Okay, so make the tail and the head touch. So F1, let's draw it a bit nicer. F2, and then that's head to tail. And then head to tail. F3. Resultants from the tail of the first pointing to the head of the last. F net or F resultant. I hope that makes sense. And I hope head to tail diagrams are feeling a little bit easier for you guys now. Obviously, we use this, the skill of drawing a head to tail diagram within a context of a, of a bigger question where you have to calculate other things. So you need to know how to do this before you can do the more complicated stuff. I'll see you in the next video.